Today in our 2012 Nissan NV, we'll be installing the ETBC7 kit. Part number ETBC7. First, we'll need to go ahead and mount the seven pole bracket onto the seven pole. We'll use the supplied hardware to install the bracket and then we'll go ahead and tighten it down. Next, for this application, we'll also be using the draw tight mounting bracket, part number 18136. Now with our seven pole bracket secured to our mounting bracket, we'll go ahead and use the worm clamp provided with the mounting bracket to attach it to the hitch. Note, before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and take some black electrical tape and wrap up our wires. This will assist in providing a clean install look while protecting the wires. Then I'll go ahead and feed the wires through the hole pre-drilled in the bracket so that they'll route up over the hitch once we mount our bracket to the hitch. Now we're ready to go ahead and mount the bracket using the worm gear clamp provided. Next, we'll need to go ahead and take the four pole pre-installed on this application and route it to the four pole on our seven pole bracket. However, for this application, the four pole is mounted inside the vehicle, so we'll need to go ahead and route it outside. For this application, the easiest way to do that is going to be to cut off the four pole end and route it down through a pre-drilled hole in the vehicle. Following the existing wiring, we'll come out the hole underneath and route it over to the hitch. Now we'll go ahead and cut the four pole off the new seven pole. Strip back both ends and use butt connectors to connect the two. Note, the white wire coming from the four pole on the vehicle side will get cut off and dead ended as we'll be using the new ground wire coming from our seven pole bracket with the pre-attached ring terminal. Now with all those connections made and secured, move on to connecting the black and blue wires from our seven pole bracket. Note these already have the yellow butt connectors pre-attached. We'll connect these two to the gray duplex cable and the two wires inside of it, the black and white wire. We'll match up black to black and then we'll use blue to white. The black wire will be our 12 volt lead to the seven pole and the blue wire will be your trailer brake power coming from the brake controller. Now, with all those connections made, I'm gonna go ahead and cut off the purple wire as it's used for the trailer reverse lights that we'll not be using in this application. Now, I'll go ahead and take some black electrical tape and wrap up our connections. Once again, this will clean up our install look, protect the wires, and help keep out any dirt, dust, debris, or moisture from the butt connectors. Next, we'll go ahead and start routing the wire on top of the hitch and securing it with the black zip ties. Now, I'll go ahead and take the white wire with the pre-attached ring terminal using the self-tapping screw provided with the install kit and secure it directly to the frame of the vehicle. Here on the cross member by the spare tire is a perfect location. Now with that attachment made, we're ready to go ahead and start routing the great duplex cable up towards the engine and into the engine compartment. 
For this application, we're gonna use some pull wire, or in this case, air tubing as pull wire to route our wire into the frame, helping protect it. We'll go ahead and take our gray duplex cable and tape it to the air tubing and then start pulling it through. Special note, when routing any of your wires, you'll wanna stay away from excessive heat, such as exhaust, or moving components such as the steering or suspension. We'll repeat this same process until we get up towards the engine compartment. Now that we're towards the front of the vehicle, we'll go ahead and use the pull wire to feed it up through the engine compartment to the top of the engine bay. Now that we're pulling it up from underneath, we'll route it over on the driver's side fender well. Here we'll be using one of the manufacturer's grommet to feed our white wire into the vehicle and up to the brake controller. Now that we've got our wire up into place, we're gonna go ahead and mark it and then use our utility knife to cut the wire in half, strip it back, so that the white wire can be routed inside the cabin of the vehicle and our black wire will get routed over to the battery. Now that we're ready to do that, let's go ahead and make the hole into the grommet. I'll be using a utility knife and a pair of side cutters to make a large enough access hole to get through. Note, to make it easier, you can also use a pull wire to route through the grommet. Now we've got the white wire pulled into the cabin of the vehicle. Now I'll go ahead and take a blue piece of tape and mark the wire so that I note that this is the power wire that runs from the brake controller back to the seven pole for the trailer braking. Now for this application, because of its length, we're gonna have to get an extra piece of gray duplex cable. In this case, approximately 10 to 12 feet long so that we can route power and ground from the brake controller to the battery. We'll go ahead and start by feeding the gray duplex cable through the grommet and into the engine bay, leaving just enough to route over to the brake controller. Next, we'll go into the cabin of the vehicle and mount our brake controller. We'll be mounting the Deconcha P3 brake controller, part number 90195. Using the hardware and bracket supplied with the brake controller, we'll go ahead and mount it to the dash here. Note, I'll also be using a clamp to help hold the bracket in place while I secure it. Now with our bracket in place and secured, we can begin wiring up the pigtail for the brake controller. Pigtail will be supplied with the brake controller installation kit. Using the butt connectors supplied with our ETBC7 kit and the brake controller, we can start making our connections now. Beginning with the wire that we ran from our seven pole connector, marked with the blue tape, will connect to the blue wire on the pigtail. We'll strip back both ends and use one of the yellow butt connectors. Next, we'll go ahead and strip back the sheathing on the gray duplex cable, exposing the black and white wire that we'll be using for power and ground. We'll go ahead and attach black to black and white to white. The final wire that we'll need to connect here in the cabin of the vehicle will be the red wire from the pigtail of the brake controller, connecting to the brake switch power wire. To locate this wire, we'll be using a test light and a piece of wire for a back probe. We'll slide the wire into the back of the connector and then test it with our test light. While pressing on the brake pedal, it should trigger the test light. Now we've isolated as being the green wire for the vehicle brake switch we'll go ahead and remove the electrical tape so we can gain access to the wire. To connect it with the red wire, we'll use the quick splice connector provided with our install kit. We'll slide the quick splice connector over the green wire, slip in the red wire into the quick splice connector, and then crimp it down and close the clasp. Now with all our wires connected, I'm going to go ahead and take some black electrical tape and wrap up our connections. Once again, cleaning up our install look and covering up the butt connectors to keep them free of dirt, dust, debris, and any moisture.
Now with that done, we'll go ahead and take the pigtail, plug it into the back of the brake controller, and then mount the brake controller into the bracket. Next, I'll go ahead and take some zip ties provided with our install kit and secure the wiring up underneath the dash, making sure to stay away from the, any moving components, such as the gas or brake pedal. Next, we'll move back to the engine bay. We'll need to continue routing our wires over to the battery. This will be the black wire that we ran from the seven pole connector and the gray duplex cable that we just ran for power and ground to the brake controller. We'll follow the manufacturer's wiring across the engine bay using zip ties to secure it as we go. Now that we're over on to the passenger side near the battery, I'll go ahead and cut off the excess from the zip ties to clean up the install look and then route to the inner fender well of the passenger side where we can mount our breakers. Here near the battery is an open area of the inner fender well It'll be a perfect location to mount our breakers. So we'll go ahead and cut off any excess of our wire to get it out of our way and then mount our breakers. We'll mount our 40 amp breaker for the power circuit to the seven pole and our 30 amp breaker for our brake controller. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and strip back and remove some of the gray duplex cable as the white wire will route over to the negative battery terminal and the power wire will go to our breaker. Then we can go ahead, strip back some of the wire and start adding our ring terminals. We'll take the power wire for our seven pole connector and attach it to our 40 amp breaker. And then take the white wire, strip it back and adding the larger ring terminal to attach it to the battery. We'll then remove the nut on the negative battery post, slip the ring terminal onto the post and then re-secure it with the nut. Now we'll go ahead and take the other power wire that routes to our brake controller, strip it back, add one of the small ring terminals, and attach it to the silver side of the breaker, as the copper side for both breakers will route directly to the battery. Now we can go ahead and secure the two power wires that we have attached to our breakers on the silver side. Next, we'll need to go ahead and make up a couple leads to go from the breakers to the positive battery post. To do this, we'll take the leftover cable that we cut off previously, strip back two ends, and mount it to the breakers. Then, we'll go ahead and route it over to the positive battery post, cut off any excess length, Strip them back and add the two larger ring terminals so we can remove the cover of the positive battery post and secure it to the positive battery terminal. And with that done, we'll now go ahead and secure the remaining portion of our wire. Then we'll cut off any excess of our zip tie, cleaning up our install look. This will complete the install of the ETB C7 install kit with our Prodigy P3 brake controller, part number 90195, with our draw tight universal mounting bracket, part number 18136, on our 2012 Nissan NV.